We're back in the shop here at Bristol Shipwrights, and we've been receiving all kinds of comments lately about everything we do, but there was one comment that said that we hadn't shown exactly how we cut these scops on the strip planking. You know, and there's all, all kinds of questions about it, you know, about the length of the scops and different things and, you know, how much trouble it is. It's pretty easy to cut those scops. And uh, we're cutting them on a bandsaw. We've got this little jig right here that we set up. It's nothing but a little piece of plywood, actually, with a couple pieces of lumber stuck to it. It's got this little piece right here that slides in this slot right here. So, you know, this is the, all we need. You could get a whole lot more elaborate than this if you wanted to, but... This thing is doing the job right here, so, you know, we haven't decided to change it. This is the first one we made. We've been doing it ever since we started. The bandsaw is a great little bandsaw. It's nice and stiff. It's an old, old Walker Turner. It's got a three-quarter inch blade in it, which is, is nice, you know. It's not an all-purpose blade for a saw this size because you can't do corners with it, but it goes nice and straight. We've got it sprung up nice and tight and adjusted properly so it doesn't drift or do anything wrong like that. And uh, that's what it takes because if it drifted around or did anything wrong, we'd have to touch them up. We don't want to do that. When we do the scoffs uh, on the second layer of planking on the Carvel planking, we're liable to put a bandsaw at each end of the shop so we don't have to turn the pieces around to cut the scoffs on the other end. We put a bandsaw down there and a bandsaw up here, so we'd have to set it up exactly like this with the fence with the same angle on it and all those kinds of things so they would match out of two different saws, but that's not going to be a problem. So There's over, well over 500 scoffs in this strip planking on this boat right here, so we don't want to waste a lot of time doing it. And we want to cut them nice and accurate because we don't want to touch them up. We're not going to plane them and do all those kinds of things because it's just, it isn't going to do any good. It actually even ruins the scoff, to tell you the truth, because it shines it all up and everything else. So we cut them and we glue them. That's it. No touch up or anything. So the scoff is like a seven to one scoff. So, you know, uh, the, the planking is five eighths of an inch thick. So the scoff's about four and a half inches or something like that, somewhere along those lines. So. What I want to do right now is show you exactly how we go about it and what you do with your hands and how you avoid cutting yourself and all those kinds of things. <laughs> well, now I'm going to show you how to cut one of these scarfs, but before I do that, I just want to talk about the scarfs themselves a little tiny bit. These scarfs are 7 to 1. Now, they don't have to be 12 to 1. They're under very, very little strain on the boat. You know, uh, the planks themselves are not individually under any strain because there's a plank going by it on each side glued to it and everything else. So they don't need to be 12 to 1. I think when we do the Carvel planking over the strip plank, and we may get into 12 to 1 scoffs, but at this point it's unnecessary. We're going to do the 12 to 1 scoffs exactly the same method anyhow. So, you know, we're ending up with a bandsaw at both ends of the boat here before it's over because that just makes it easier. Or we don't have to keep changing the planks, turning them end for end, you know, and different things like that. So, you know, the scoffs that'll point that way will cut at one end of the boat and the scoffs on the other end at the other end of the boat. So, pretty neat. Now, I just wanted to show you other few things. This scarf right here in this little tiny piece is a little bit crooked. It's, it's across the board a little tiny bit like that, and uh, we don't like that. So we've got an adjustment right here on our little jig. It's a little wedge right here that we can just push in and out, and it tilts this piece a little tiny bit. You could do the same thing by tilting the table, but when you undo the table, it's liable to go too many degrees, and you can't figure out where it is and all kinds of things. So we do this. We put a little uh, wedge right in there, and uh, if it's a little crooked or something, we can just adjust it with that. So it works pretty nice. And, uh, you know, the other things I want to show you is, is that doing something like this is just like any other woodwork, and you have to be pretty careful while you're doing it. You don't want to put your fingers or your hand in that blade at all, not even once, you know, to learn the lesson. You just never want to let that happen. So, you know, it's all about your hand positioning and how you get started and how you finish up. So I'm just going to show you a few things about it. Uh, we've got this jig set up. It has really no safety features on it at all. I think you'd say this is the only safety feature on the whole thing, and that just means that uh, when you put your hand down there, you slide your hand up against that nail. That's as far up as you can get your hand. If you get your hand any further than that nail, you're liable to get cut. And the other thing is, is once the scarf is made, once you've cut through it, 
you stop and draw it back. You don't just keep pushing in that direction like you're cutting something on a table saw or something like that. That won't work either. So you push it in and you take it back. The other thing about it is, is that this piece of wood that we're going to scoff is not going to be clamped to the jig. So you can't allow it to move on the jig whatsoever. And it really isn't all that hard to do. You just put it up there and squeeze it nice and tight. And when you cut it, it won't move. Otherwise, you'd have to clamp it or do something like that. But we're getting away with it just like this. And uh, let me show you how it's done here. So I'm going to start our little bandsaw right up here. And I'm going to show you a few things about how we go about it. The procedure. You have to be careful. We're going to draw this jig back until the blade is just past the end of the jig like that. Now I can hold my material past the blade on the other side. Now I'm going to just hold it down with my left hand. I'm going to put my right hand right here up against that nail. That's our only safety feature right there, really. It stops me from sliding my hand forward on the jig. Now I'm going to hold it up nice and tight against the fence, and I'm going to start cutting. And once I get down there, I'm taking this hand out of the way. And there you have it. A very nice scarf, very smooth, nice and square across, completely done. Now, we have a little adjustment, like I said, but I didn't have to play with it. So, you know, it really does a nice job. Uh, perfectly smooth for gluing right there. We don't mind if it's got a little tiny of a saw texture in it because it just makes the glue hold that much better. So that's the way we do it. And like I said, we've done so many of them already with this same jig works absolutely perfectly. Well, I'm here today to give you a little demonstration about how we're going to be cutting the Carvel planking that goes over the strip planking. Now, I've gone through all the strip planking, all the details about how to do it and all that kind of stuff, and I mean, it just comes out perfect, and it's perfectly tight. We're going to plank over it, Carvel. We want that planking to be as tight as this. We're not going to do any caulking or anything like that. It's all going to be glued on. And there's quite a few different methods to doing this, and uh, I want to do it the easiest possible way. I've come up with a system of progressive bevel sawing Carvel planking that just seems to me uh, eh, fairly revolutionary, possibly, and uh, it works out fantastic. I, I, uh, we are going to make for this boat a full-length bench like this on both sides of the boat, which really isn't a big deal. It's a very simple thing to do. It's useful for us in many different ways, but it's going to be a planking bench, one on this side and one on the other side. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I go about it. Now, I want to cut all this plank into progressive bevel, so I have to know the bevel on the hull that I need to cut to, and uh, I'll record those on the hull as we go down. I'll transfer those onto the planking and then I'm going to cut it to that bevel. It could be like two degrees, two and a half degrees, three, three and a half, four degrees, probably not anything over four degrees, but surprisingly enough, across a one inch plank, four degrees is quite a bit. You know, if you cut it 90 degrees and put it up there, it wouldn't fit. And uh, I'm just so opposed to having to cut in the plank in perfectly 90 degrees, whether you follow the line by hand, or I, I just don't care what kind of tool you use to follow that line, it's not gonna come out perfect. Then you have to put the plank on edge and clamp it on a bench or use bench vices or whatever it is that you might be doing and then uh, bevel the edge of it to fit the plank that's been put on the boat previous. Well, it's just not gonna work for me. It's not fast enough. It's not something I enjoy doing at all. I do not like struggling at woodwork, so I've come up with these systems, and it's required that I come up with some specialized equipment. Now, this saw right here, I've been using this saw for years to do this project or this process, and I've done it on quite a few large Trumpy power yachts and many, many other boats. It's not a system that I'm experimenting with. This system works, and it saves time, tons of time. So I'm going to be cutting it to progressive bevel. I've got my saw set up so that I can change the bevel as I saw, right, by just spinning this around and around, it changes. That would be like 2 degrees. That's 3 degrees, 
four degrees. So it's a very simple thing to change the degrees. I've got a degree readout right here. I've made all kinds of other alterations to this saw so that it wouldn't be uh, like spongy when I push down on it. I've changed all the way it's bolted in here, all kinds of different things. I've also changed the side of the saw right here so that it cuts a half an inch away from a batten. Now, it used to be maybe an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter hanging out there, but the problem with that was the guide batten that I want to use would end up being too narrow. So I've altered the saw in, in that way and many other ways. So I'm going to give you a demonstration about how to go about it, and I hope you enjoy it. First thing I'm going to do is this is the plank we're going to use. And every plank on this boat that we put on the top sides is going to have one straight edge on it, like this, perfectly straight and jointed or smoothed in some manner to be perfectly 90 degrees. And we're going to put that plank down on the bench like that. And I think just for the heck of it, I'm going to just tack it down real quick like right there. So it doesn't move around on me too much. Now, I've got another batten right here that I'm going to pull up into position. That's going to support the saw. And I also have this batten right here. Now, this batten was meant to resemble Carvel planking. It is straight on one edge right now. I'm going to match that edge up with the plank that I'm cutting like that. And I'm going to slide the skill saw along and follow this edge of the batten. Now, like I say, it's going to be cutting a half an inch from that batten. So what we're going to have here is a batten that's made up like this, that's full length for this boat. It's going to be a half an inch narrower than the planks that we're going to put on the boat. So it's a very simple thing to do. You, you set your material down on the bench, you pick up this batten, you put it on there like so, even it up on the outboard edge like so, tack it down real quickly like that. I'm just going to put three nails in it for right now. I'm going to make sure that edge is nice and even. Like so, and another one right down here. Now, like I said, that batten is supposed to be a half inch narrower than the plank you're cutting. Now, if you wanted to cut the plank a tiny bit wider to, say, catch up with one of the line-off lines on the boat or a tiny bit narrower, it'd be very simple. All you'd have to do is slide this batten over and have it hang over the plank you're cutting and it's going to cut the plank a little narrow. If you wanted to cut it a little bit wider, you just pull it this way and have the plank that you're cutting protruding out behind the batten right here. So very sim simple to adjust the size of the plank you're trying to cut, and uh, you're going to find out that it works out pretty well. Now, what I'm going to do also is I'm going to tack this batten down so that it doesn't slide on me when I cut. Like that. Now, now, there's a number of things that have to be here. This is a light batten. It's very easy to force down against the bench just with the weight of the saw. You know, the batten's got a little bit of a curve to it and a little twist and a little of this and a little of that, but when you put the saw on it, it forces it right down against these sleepers on the bench right here. So, now the other thing is the plank that we're going to cut and the batten tacked on top of it, they're not laying perfectly flat on the sleepers either because the plank has got a little bit of a a roll to it or a little bit of a twist. You can't have that because we're going to be cutting planks that are within a quarter of a degree or a half of a degree. It's got to be perfect. So what we're going to do is take a bench dog like this and we're going to have a series of these all the way down the length of this plank. But I'm just going to demonstrate that real quick. It's a very simple thing. They've been using them for years. You put it in a hole in the bench, whack it with a hammer, and it holds the plank right down perfectly tight, just like that. So that's exactly what we're trying to do, and I'm ready to cut. Now, I'm going to put some fictitious degrees on the batten right here to follow. This is going to be zero. Let's call this one here. We'll call it two here, three, four, and five. So we're going to make a five degree progression in bevel as we saw it. So it's pretty simple. I'm going to set my saw to depth here very quickly. Let's see if I've got it. I'm going to go down just a hair more. 
All right, like that. So now I'm going to slam my saw up against the batten. I'm going to read the bevels as I go and adjust the saw to match the bevel that's written on the batten. scrap here. We're going to undog our plank and we're going to separate the batten from the plank. I'm going to remove the batten and give you a little look at the cut that we just made in the camera. I hope you'll be able to actually see the progression in it, but that was a progression from zero degrees on one end to five degrees on the other end following the batten, it's perfectly smooth, it's perfectly straight, and the progression of bevels comes out exactly right. So there you have it. How many, how many masks are we going to need? Well, how many dogs? How many dogs are we going to need? Well, we're going to need about a half a dozen bench dogs to accomplish this project just right. And uh, today, we're going to need a mask because you wear a mask doing everything. And, uh, you know, you can have a mask over your mouth and your nose, no problem doing this. But the system works so well that if someone was to just call out the degrees for you, you could actually do this with a mask over your eyes because you don't even need to see what you're doing to do this properly. <laughs>